Hey Stitch Cuties, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and welcome to the video tutorial for using your embroidery files to make your June U True block. So as you know, this is a really fun collaborative project from ourselves here at Stitches of Love Quilting and our favorite lady named Amy, Amy Brucken of Amy Brucken Designs. So this is her original artwork that then we got to work with her on and mom and Amy together brought it to life in machine applique and machine embroidery for you. So let's first talk about all the tools you need to have to get started. So of course you have your kit that came in the mail in your super fun polka dotted box. So you have all your prefused laser cut applique pieces. I've gone on and just peeled the backing from all of those so I have them ready to go and I'm just gonna set them aside. Then you have your fabrics. These are what make the border on your block. We don't need those right now so I'm gonna set those aside as well. And then you have your background fabric which I am going to lightly starch and then press so that it's ready to use. I have beautiful thread colors from your U Troop thread kit. And so the colors this month are the white 1001. These are all Sulky 40 weight rayons. Then you have your black 1005. Butterfly gold 0567, also known as yellow. <laughs> then we have this medium tawny brown, which is a really great brown. And that is 1056. And last but not least, our favorite green, which is 1177. So the tools that I have to work with my embroidery machine, of course, I have my tearaway stabilizer in my 8x12 hoop. I have my 3M transport tape, which I love to hold my fabric in place as I get started. I have my favorite iron, which is my steam fast travel iron. It's great for ironing within a hoop for your embroidery machine. I have my Steady Betty. Of course, as you know, I love to iron on my Steady Betty when I'm working on projects. This is the 12 by 16 size. And then I have some new toys this month that I'm really excited about, which are um, my Caterpillar Light Pad, my matching mat that is a self-healing cutting mat. And then below that, I have my applique glass. Now the applique glass, I don't really need for the machine embroidery part, but I really like to have that between my um, cutting mat and my light pad just to kind of secure my light pad but when you're doing regular machine applique this glass pad is a must and i'm so excited that we have it to bring to you so without further ado load the file for the first step of the june block in press go with your white thread in it and we'll be back to put our fabric in place okay so when you take your hoop off you will see that you have a nice t right in the center so let's prepare our fabric so these are um modabella solids and so it's there's not really a front and a back but pick whichever is your right side and you're going to fold it in half down towards you right sides together and then you're just going to fold it in half one more time so now what you're going to do is take your hoop i always turn it sideways in front of me just because it fits on my steady buddy that way you're going to take your fabric. You have two folded lines, two folded edges right here. You're just going to put it in place, open it up, and then unfold it one last time. And then there we go. So now I'm just going to tape this in place and we're ready to start. So we're going to keep that white thread on for quite a few steps. So you won't have to change your thread for a minute. And when we put this back on, the machine is gonna give us the first of our applique outlines, which is going to be the black base that our little bee sheep is over. And it's gonna be the, the starting pieces of three of our bumblebees. Okay, take a look. We have some applique pieces outlined for us. So let's start ironing them on. On this step, there's no overlaps. So all we have to do is just grab a piece and start ironing it into place. So I'm gonna start with the base down here. There we go. Then we have three little bumblebee bodies. Now each body is different for your bumblebee, so you're gonna wanna make sure you get them lined up with the right body. So I'm just gonna put all three in place. And then this little guy. So I'll iron those into place, and then we're gonna put their wings on. Look how cute those are. Now, you'll be happy to know that each of these wings is exactly the same. So you don't have to try and figure anything out here. I will tell you, be really careful and make sure you put your fusible side down because with little pieces can be a little tricky. So just aim it in here. Now, if you have little tweezers by your embroidery machine, now would be the time it's probably handy to grab them 
just depending on, you know, it's just sometimes easier with little tweezers to aim. So let's get our little bee wings. Aren't they cute? There we go. And two more to put in place. Doot, 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 doot. See, like right now, it'd be nice to have tweezers because my fingers just are not turning it. There we go. And then our last little wing. Perfect. So just gonna carefully iron those in. Now a trick when you put these down, if you think any of them are a little out of place, while they're still warm, you can gently adjust them. Again, I would use tweezers. I'm using the tip of my um, scissors, not the best idea. Okay, so now, now that those are ironed in place, let's put them back, put our hoop back on the arm of our machine. Now we're gonna get the stripes outlined for us and all the checkerboards are gonna be outlined for us on this bottom base. Okay, so now you have your next round of applique outlines. So let's go on and put those in place. Now, a little trick that I like to do is sometimes reference my placement guide, even though I'm doing the embroidery machine. So what I've done is laid the black stripes on the bumblebee where they go. And that way I don't have to think about anything as I put this on my hoop. So I'm just gonna grab my pieces and start lining them up right there. And then my second one. Now, some of these pieces are really little, so make sure that you don't lose any. I like to have also sometimes, like I just have them laying beside my workstation right now. But another little trick I like is to have a little bowl and that holds all my pieces, especially when we're working with something like these little bitty um, white pieces and the black pieces on this. And then we'll put two here. See in this piece number 35, look at that, he's so little. But he's so cute, it's the little head of your bumblebee. There you go. And we'll iron that right in place. And then the last two stripes. Then we'll start putting our checkerboard pieces in place. And good news again on the checkerboard is that they are all exactly alike. And so you don't have to worry about anything when you're putting that on. So we have these two in place. Boop, everything is ironed there. So let's move to our checkerboard. So I'm just gonna start right here on one edge and I'm gonna work my way over. Now the machine is gonna do an individual square around each of these yellow pieces. So it doesn't matter about the order that you place these down. And they're gonna overlap just a hair maybe based on how you get it in place. But again, don't you worry about a thing. It's gonna turn out perfectly. So I'm just gonna place them across the top row and then I'm going to iron. Got that one a little crooked. There we go. So just give it a press and a press. And now let's do the bottom row. See, isn't that easy? It's kind of like putting together a little puzzle. Well, an easy puzzle where you know where the pieces go. <laughs> like, you know, when you do a puzzle and like, there's that one piece of the edge that you can't find but that doesn't happen here. You've got everything you need. There we go. All right, so let's press these in place. Now again, keep that white thread on your machine. When we put this back on, the machine is gonna give us an outline of three more applique pieces, and that is going to be the two little stripe legs of our little um, bumblebee sheep and the big beehive body. All right, here's our three applique pieces outlined and I wanna point out that we wanna make sure and put down the two striped legs before we put down the large body piece, okay? So, just turn it sideways. We're gonna take our left leg, put this little guy right in place, and our right leg. Aren't these the cutest little striped legs? Like little Pippi long stocking stockings. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Okay, and now our big, beehive and all you're gonna do is line it up and again with a big piece I like to make sure it's in place all the way around and then I work my way around ironing it see so perfect fit right here so and I am picking my iron up I know it probably looks on camera like I'm dragging it 
but I do gently lift it. And then once it's in iron, once it's in place, then it's okay to, but while you're putting it in place, you don't want to drag your iron. So now we're going to put this back on. It's starting to look like something, isn't it? So now the next pieces that we're going to have outlined are going to be the two um, bottoms of her shoes. And then it's going to be the three accent colors across the body. Okay, so now let's iron these applique pieces on. There's nothing that overlaps here, so easy peasy. So I'm gonna start with the green on the shoes. So we'll just put the right one in place and the left piece in place. Perfect. Give those a press with the iron. There we go. And now we have the three pieces for her body. Is it a girl or a boy? I guess it could be either. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask the designers. What did they say? To me, the striped legs are girly. I don't know. Who knows? Probably because I thought about Pippi Longstocking when I saw those earlier. Do you remember the Pippi Longstocking movies? They were cute. I loved um, those kind of movies when I was a kid. All right, so I'm just going to gently work my way over with these big pieces. Oh my gosh, how cute! Okay, so now we have two more steps of applique outline. So the next one is going to give us the um, two pieces of like the little U hat that our little bumblebee sheep is wearing. And then we'll come back for the final piece. So let's put this back on. Okay, so we have these two pieces outlined and these do over and under laps. So you want to make sure you put down your yellow piece first, which is piece number 21 right here. You're gonna put that in place before you put the black piece down. There we go. Now that that's ironed on, we'll put, I'm calling this the U. <laughs> it's really not. I think it's like her little antennas. So put that right in place. There we go. And now we're gonna put this back on for one more step of applique outlines. And that is going to be the outline for where we're going to put the face on. Okay, it's time to iron that final piece on. So we're gonna take the piece and line it up. And again, when you have a piece that has, you know, like a lot of little jut outs, AKA the ears, you wanna make sure you have it fully in place before you iron it down. So just give it a little tap as you work your way over. There we go. Okay, so cute. Let's take a look. Dun, dun, dun. That's going to be adorable when it's all stitched. Okay, so we're going to keep the white thread on our machine for one more step. And that's because the machine is going to do the cutest little buttonhole stitch around all six of your wings. And it's going to give our sheep the eyes and its smile. OMG, are you so excited that your little sheepy has a face? This makes me so happy. And can we talk about how cute the little bumblebee wings are? That's the most fun little bumblebee stitch ever. I love it. And also don't forget her little legs are stitched. Okay, so now it's time for our first color change. We're going to load the black, the 1005 black, and the machine's gonna do a lot of stitching for us right here. It's going to do the black portion of the checkerboard down here. It's gonna stitch around the um, black on her face and it's going to do each of the stripes on your bumblebee and it's also going to give the flight lines of your bumblebee. So load this thread and watch your machine stitch away. Okay so you have a lot of things that got stitched and it's looking really good. I will tell you there's a little bit of trimming to do in this step. We normally don't have to do that but with these little dashed lines you're just gonna snip. I like to use really sharp scissors these are my Karen K. Buckley's and they are sharp all the way to the tip. So I can get right in there and give a little snip. And then I just go back and trim that other edge of it. And I have a little trick because when you're cutting something this little, you end up with some little fuzzies. See how I'm getting little fuzzies? Let me show you in just a second what I do to get rid of those. It's really not that genius. It's pretty, pretty basic. And I'm sure you're gonna be like, yeah, duh, Brittany. But let me show you, you just take a piece of your tape and boop, comes right off. So just give a little trim to the rest of your pieces. And then what you're gonna do before you put it back on, you're gonna change your thread color to our butterfly gold, the 0567. And the machine is gonna do another round of stitching for us 
on our checkerboard, on all your yellow checkerboard. It's gonna go around the outside of your sheep bumblebee body, and it's going to do the yellow portions of your bumblebee. So go on and trim your threads and change your thread to the butterfly gold, and we'll move on to the next step. Yay, all of the yellow is stitched. How cute does this look? And isn't it funny, like I always find it interesting how colors look so different based on what fabric they're stitched on because that yellow is around this outer bumblebee and it's the same yellow that's on the bumblebee. And isn't it funny how the threads look like they're different colors? It just works out like that, it's fun. So now we're gonna change our thread color to the 1056, the tawny brown, and it's gonna go around this um, orange in the center and it's gonna give it a really nice accent with the stitching. Okay, take a look, we're almost done. We have just one last color to load on our machine and that's the 1177, the avocado, and the machine is going to stitch around the two shoes. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna trim our block and get ready for the borders. Yay, so now everything is stitched. Doesn't it look so good? So you can tell that I've taken it out of the hoop and I've removed my stabilizer from the back. Remember, there's a T, right, that initially um, told us where to place our fabric. When you're removing your stabilizer, you'll snip where that T goes past the design. Just be careful when you do that. Now, what I have in front of me is a piece of glass that is our Caterpillar applique glass sheet on top of my light box and what I'm gonna do is just gently press my little wrinkles from where I removed my stabilizer. Because you can iron on this glass, not for very long, but for a few minutes, enough to make really great applique placement lines and things like that. So what we're gonna do is put our placement guide in place. We're gonna line up our design. So with the help of the light pad, I'll know that I have it fully in place, just like so. With the help of my handy dandy friction pin and my ruler, I am going to mark where I need to trim. Now remember, you trim to the outer line that's shown on your, on your um, pattern, correct? See, there's two lines. The inner one is gonna be where your seam ultimately is. The outer one is your trim line. So I'm just gonna take my friction pin and draw my line there move down here and i use the lines on the ruler to make sure i stay nice and straight there we go perfect and then we're gonna do the bottom and top lines so just make sure you stay nice and lined up there we go Easy peasy. So, you know, normally I don't have my light pad out and it's because you can't do a lot on your light pad. What I really like now is that we have this glass and in a second I'm gonna show you the cutting mat that matches and I can't tell you how happy this new little system makes me. It's just delightful. I'm sorry, here comes my head for just a second. There we go. Sorry about that. You gonna see my crazy curly hair today. There we go. Take a look perfectly drawn lines. Now we're gonna give it a trim. Let me close my friction pin up. Now I'm gonna take my cutting mat that matches. See, I'm gonna put it right on top of my glass. And this um, cutting mat has like a little bit of grip so it doesn't slide around. I love it. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. If you don't have this set, I would really recommend it. So now we're just gonna give it a trim all the way around and we're really gonna see our little sheep come to life. There we go. Isn't this easy? I love it. You don't have to do this method for trimming it. You can measure, you know what I mean? No problem at all and trim your block. I like to just do it this way. It makes me feel a little more confident that I'm not gonna mess up. Okay, take a look. Let's, oh, one more little bit. Beep. Had one little string I didn't cut through. Okay, let's take a look at our block. How cute is he? I love it. This is Honey Bell. Oh, well, Honey Bell's a girl. We solved that because Honey Bell with an E. Love it. Okay, so now let's talk about our borders. We have four 
border pieces from our box that we're gonna prepare. So let's talk about what we're gonna do with those. The first thing I would do is put my Steady Betty on top and give these a nice press. Most of them stay pretty nicely pressed in your box. You can also starch them. However you starch your fabric for your block is how much starch I would use on these as well, right? Because you want it to match all the way through. So now I can move this again and we're ready to trim for the borders. We're just gonna do the borders right now. So let's take a look at our pattern. We are going to have the navy and the tomato are gonna to be trimmed to one and a half by nine and a half. So let's do that. You can trim them individually or you can kind of put them together. So first thing we're gonna do with it long ways, we're gonna to go to one and a half inches. So I know that I have more than one and a half inches. So I'm just gonna give it a trim. And now what I'm gonna do, cause now I know that this is a perfect line, I'm gonna turn it and I'm using my ruler, not my cutting mat I must say, for my measurements. And it's perfect on that line at one and a half. So we're gonna give it a trim. There we go. And now we just need to turn it sideways and cut to the nine and a half. So keep them together. And let's see, this ruler, does it go to nine and a half? It sure does, look at that. So I'm just gonna gently trim a little bit off the edges, keeping it lined up. See, I'm using the lines here to make sure it's perfectly straight. I'm gonna do a little trim right here. And then I'm just gonna turn it one more time to get my final cut. So nine and a half lined up nicely. So you can see the fabric we give in your kit more than enough. Nine and a half lined up perfectly straight. And there's, I mean, you can trim these however you want. There's multiple methods for cutting. And I think I might even do it different sometimes. All right, so now we have these two trimmed, right? So we're gonna repeat the same thing on our remaining two colors. So we have our lavender and our yellow, but these need to be trimmed to a one and a half by 11 and a half. So I'm just gonna line them up. And we're gonna start with our 11 and a half. Now my ruler is not quite 11 and a half. So what we're gonna do is a little trim down here to give us our perfect straight line down here. So I'm using my ruler and my cutting mat now to line up. See, so I've cut a little trim off of that. Now I'm gonna turn in and we're gonna go to the 11 and a half. The only caveat I have about using your cutting mat as you're um, measuring in really with your ruler throughout one project, try and stick with the same tools the whole time. And I have to tell you, if you watched the last two months videos, I used a different cutting mat than now. It's not gonna make that big of a difference, but you know, accuracy is always good. So now I'm just gonna get this lined up. And really what I'm caring about is right here, cause I'm making this line and this line accurate. So now, and one way to know, like here's a nice little trick. I'm on 11 and a half on my um, cutting mat. And if you look at my ruler, my half inch right here matches exactly. So even though I used something different last month, since it matches my same ruler, I know that these are really accurate mats that I've been using. That's always good to know, right? So now I need to trim these down to one and a half. So let's line this little guy up. And I know that the top and bottom are perfectly straight. So I'm just gonna make sure, see like my one and a half right is right here. As long as I have more than I need, I'm good. So we're just gonna trim here. Perfect. You could keep those scraps. You never know what you can make with them. Little hexes, all kinds of stuff you can make with them. All right, and so now we're gonna do our final cut and we're gonna have a perfect, perfect measured strip. Perfect. 
Look at that. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we're gonna sew these on. You wanna pay attention every month because sometimes the top and bottom are longer and sometimes the sides are longer or shorter, right? That's part of the like wonky look of the quilt, which is so fun. So we'll take a look at our pattern. We are going to sew a navy on the top first and a red on the bottom. So this is gonna be our first step. Actually, it's step number one and two. Then we are going to come back and we're gonna put the yellow on the left and our purple on the right. So what you're gonna do right now, you're gonna take your blue border and you're gonna flip it down, line it up nicely. Same with your red. You can use pins if you'd like, but you're gonna go to your sewing machine and you're gonna do a nice quarter inch seam across the top and the bottom, and then we'll be back to press them. Okay, so now I'm back and I've sewn the seam for the top and bottom. What I'm gonna do real quick is pull my steady Betty out and I'm gonna press and set my seams. So what I mean by that, I'm gonna gently press it before I open it. And then I just finger press a bit. You're gonna press your seam towards the block border. So in this case, towards the navy, give it a nice press. And because I did a nice starching before I did anything, these are just staying really lovely throughout the entire process. So now I'm gonna set this seam and repeat. There we go. Easy peasy. So now let's talk again about our borders for the left and right. We are going to put the yellow on the left and the purple on the right. So the same thing, face down or right sides together, you're gonna line it up. You're gonna go to your sewing machine and do a lovely quarter inch seam allowance and we'll be back to set and press those seams. And now you're back with these two sides sewn on. So it's time for your very final step. You're just gonna set your seams and you are going to, just the same as you did for the top and bottom, gently press this over and your seam allowance is going to go towards the block border. So just give this a nice press. Oh my gosh, so cute. Aren't these fun to make every month? I have fun with them. And then give just a little bit more. So this is setting your seam when you press it first. Just really gives you a nice seam. There we go. All right. You know what? I always like to like compare it to the cover. <laughs> and it's going to look just like the cover, which is fun. So let's take a look. Look at that finished block. It is too cute. Where is the cover of our pattern? Did I walk away with it? Let's see. Here it is. Look at that. We have a perfect match. That means we did it 100% correct. All right, so I hope you had so much fun making your June U Troop block with your embroidery machine. And hold tight, it's almost time for July. Happy stitching!